Good day everyone. In this video I'm going to be going over the the ACL lab in this class. So um, the ACL lab has a number of steps. Before you can actually implement ACLs you have to basically build this network from scratch in GNS. Um, there will be a question here telling you, asking you to choose which IP addresses to give the F01 or 0 slash 1 interfaces on these routers. You need to pick IP addresses for them from this subnet. So you should be able to do that by now, especially from the VLSM lab. You should be able to do that by now. Then you'll be given questions on the subnet numbers. Um, basically, it's for the first question is talking about this subnet here. Second question is talking about this subnet here. Um, you can do that with a subnetting calculator or on paper, which would be better because it gives you more practice. But either way, this part's pretty easy. Just put it up, put this network together like you have every other one or most of the other ones in this class. Step two is OSPF. Um, if you need a review, you can look at my command guide or mini lecture. Um, you can also contact me if you need help with this part. Then finally, we'll get to the ACLs. So um, ACLs are rules, a list of rules that permit or control which traffic is or is not allowed to pass through a specific router. So um, this is really good for security. This is a very important concept to know. Um, there's two types of ACLs you need to understand. There's standard ACLs, which are, as the name implies, very, very basic. And then there's extended ACLs, which add a lot more features, although not as good as a firewall um, device or software. So the rest of the questions basically um, discuss what happened with the, um, where you put your ACL and um, what happened when you did it. Those should be pretty simple. Um, it also tells you to include your commands that you use why you picked that router and then um, you can also eat, include a screenshot for these questions what was the IC, ICMP response type or say what it is um, so after you do that um, basically you'll be comp completing three of these ACLs you need to make sure you leave the last one leave the last ACL you, that you configure which will be using a protocol or you'll be blocking specific protocol traffic you can use your textbook to um, there's a table in the textbook that will show you the port numbers to help you block that. So one important consideration with working with ACLs is determining where to put the rule set. So basically when you work with ACLs you're, you're basically applying them to an interface which I'll show in my document or the command guide I made. So um, standard ACLs are placed near the destination and I'll explain why that's important but just know that for now that standard ACLs always need to be put clo as close to the destination as possible and then extended ACLs need to be placed as close to the source of the packets as possible the, these rules are very important to follow because if you don't do them um, your ACLs will not work correctly and I'll, this, I'll um, showcase how to do this but anyway um, command guide the new one for this, um, this module implementing standard ACLs and then extended ACLs excuse me so the global configuration mode new word is access list and then a number you need to make sure you use the right number standard ACLs can only use from 1 to 99 or 1300 to 19, 1999 and then there's extended ACLs which can only use 100 to 100 or 19, I'm sorry 199 or 2000 to 2699 Make sure you use the right number here. Then you need to use either permit or deny, not both. You need to just use one. So for your labs, you're going to be usually you're going to be using the deny mostly. Then you need the source. Now the source can either be a specific IP address. Typically, if you do an IP address, you include the the word host in front of it. I would recommend you do that. Um, or you'll be denying from a, or or you'll be regulating traffic from an entire subnet. So the way to do this is you include the subnet ID and then the wildcard mask. You should already know how to do those from OSPF. But if you need a review, the textbook has a little um, little guide on how to do it. The PowerPoints do too. So after you do that, um, the last ACL rule you need to put is a permit any rule. The reason you need to do this is because ACLs are automatically configured to have an implicit deny all that's the way ACLs work. They automatically deny all traffic. Um, the reason that's done that way is because in real life, most ACLs are made with made with block or allowing specific traffic in mind. 
and then um, blocking everything else. That's far more secure, but in this lab, you're going to be denying traffic and you need to allow everything else. So make sure you put this permit any. And for extended ACLs, it's permit IP permit any any. So after you do this, you need to pick an interface to apply the ACL to. You just pick your interface like you would apply IP to address or whatever. Uh, then type IP address group number, which is the number up you, you chose up here. Typically, you just use one. Or um, you could use 100 if you're doing an extended ACL. Then in or out. So whether you use in or out um, depends on what ACL you're using. Typically, if you're... Um, doing a standard ACL, you're going to use the out command. If you're using an extended ACL, you're going to be using an in command. Now that makes sense because um, a standard ACLs are blocked at the destination. So that's, I'll show you in the um, right little network I've made. They're basically going to be on the router interface that's closest to the computers that this um, traffic is trying to reach. And vice versa for extended ACLs. So extended ACLs are a little more complicated, actually um, quite a bit more complicated. Basically, the main goal of extended ACLs is to let you select a um, source and a destination, and also you can block specific ports, and also you can do specific um, subnets and hosts again. Um, textbooks has textbooks. I'm sorry, the textbook and PowerPoint have a lot more examples, but I'm going to go over a quick one here. So I have a little. Um, network I created quickly to showcase this. Um, I, it's implemented with OS OSPF and a few IP addresses. This is a dummy network here, a little dummy subnet here. It's got nothing configured. It's just for demonstration purposes only. Um, but anyway, we have Bob and Larry here. Um, office. They're working in the office, working really hard on news shows and stuff. You can probably tell where I got these names from. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, the textbook used them too. Anyway, um, Jimmy and Jerry, yeah, they love to eat. They're in the kitchen all the time. The thing about Jimmy and Jerry, though, they like to have fun all the time, and they're sending constantly sending prank messages to Bob and Larry while they work hard at work. You know, Bob has had enough of that, so he decided to create an ACL to block all traffic from Jimmy. He's getting really tired, He's getting really tired of their annoying or their annoying messages. The messages. So anyway, to do this, we're going to do conf t. Access list one, that's the number. We're going to deny traffic. And host, we can use the host keyword, and then there's Jimmy's IP address. It's you notice the subnet number here and then the IP address I gave him. Um access list one permit any, you gotta remember the permit any um the permit any um command, otherwise this AC will not work. Now you notice I'm configuring this from the office router. So we're gonna actually configure it to F0. So if you remember what, from what I said, you need to put, a, this is a standard ACL by the way, you need to configure it as close to the destination as possible. And I'll explain why. So if, say Bob configured this ACL right here, F00. Yeah, it would block all the annoying messages from to the office network, but there's a big problem. You know, Jimmy and Jerry, they work for Mr. Nezzer down here, and um, if Bob put this ACL here, Jimmy and Jerry would not be able to connect communicate with Nezzer. Actually, in fact, they wouldn't be able to communicate outside the subnet whatsoever. So that's a big problem. And we can't have that, so that's why this ACL needs to be placed as close to the destination as possible. So, um, IP access group 1, and let me double check the page here, and um, in or out. So this would be going out. So think of it this way. We have Jimmy's traffic. He's sending an annoying message. It's going here, and um, we need to press. So it arrives it off the office router. Now we could say in. That technically would work, but if we have another network here, like we have like Junior, a Junior network over here, um, Jimmy won't be able to communicate with Junior. That's why we need to put it at the absolute destination. So out. So we're regulating outgoing traffic to Bob and Larry's office network. So that's that. So let's go ahead and um, this is, oops, wrong computer. Uh, let me see if this is, yeah, here's Jimmy. So I did some ping tests, you can see. Um, now let's try to ping Bob here. Uh, 100, yes. 
Um, now, take a look at this message. Now, you've seen like timeout messages and destination unreachable messages. Now, this message is a little different, and this is what you're looking for when you're configuring these networks. You need to make sure that um, you see a communication administratively permit or prohibited. So this and this indicates that the ping failed. And if you're using an ACL um, and you're blocking specific traffic, this is what you want to see. Um, let's tr actually try Jerry too. Now notice we didn't explicitly block Jerry. Let's try that. So it might take a minute. Yeah, there, there we go. So you probably already ran into this where ARP is performing and you get timeout messages. So notice how our ACL blocks Jerry's traffic, or blocks Jimmy's traffic, because we have this explicit IP address here, but it won't block Jerry. So that's how ACLs work when you're trying to block a specific host. We could have blocked the entire subnet, but I wanted to demonstrate that. So um, that's basically how you work with ACLs. Um, let's do one more. So um, back to our little um, story, I guess you can say. Well, Bob, he got he's got some anger issues, and he and every time Jimmy and Jerry send a prank message, Bob sends a really mean message. You know, Larry, he 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 doesn't like that. He doesn't want Jimmy and Jerry's feelings to get hurt. So he's going to block Bob's traffic to Jimmy and Jerry. So we're in configure terminal still. Um, no IP access. Oops. Access group one. Hmm. Did I do that wrong? Excuse me a moment. Okay, I came back. Uh, I found the command to delete ACLs. It's no access list one or whatever the number is. So it's no access list. So uh, I apologize for that. Um, anyway, as I was saying, um, so our, we're going to now block Bob's traffic to Jimmy and Jerry's. So the way we do that is oh, IP access list 100. Now notice that we're using 100. This is an extended ACL. So standard ACLs, they can only handle source, the source traffic. You cannot determine... You cannot um, this. You cannot specify this the destination or protocols or anything else. Extended ACLs allow you to do this. So we're going to 100 deny host. So let's see 10.0.0.100. So excuse me a minute. Let me extend this here. So. So that's our source. The first thing we do is deny host, and we put the source. We also need to put protocol, I believe. Let me double check this a minute. So deny protocol host. Okay. So let's go back. Deny IP. So IP basically is all traffic host. And uh, we're going to block it from just Jerry. Let's just do Jerry, Jerry this time. Host 10.0.1.101. Hmm. Excuse me a moment. Let me check what's going on here. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. The IP command was not supposed to be put there. Okay, there. No, now remember access list 100 permit IP any any. That's our explicit permit all statement that makes sure all of the traffic can still run. So interface. Now for extended ACLs, we need to put as close to the source as possible. So we're actually going to put on the same interface. F0 slash 0 IP access group 100 in. So now let's try Bob. Okay. So let's try pinging 10.0.1. Oops. 101. So that's what we want to see. So traffic from Bob to um, Jerry is not flowing. Now if we try um, Jimmy, we can still ping him. So that's the that was the whole point of me using the host. I wanted to show that. And in addition to that, let's check Larry. 
ping one zero dot one dot one one. Yeah, Larry can still ping. So basically, that's standard and extended ACLs in a nutshell. Um, I hope you enjoyed this um, demonstration. Thank you for watching. If you need any help, the lab, let me know, and have a good day.